Good morning, World Harvest, and happy Resurrection Day. Yes. Happy Easter. Sunday's finally here, baby. Yes. So we are so excited to be here with you today and that you chose to be with us here this morning on this Easter morning, which the weather's beautiful outside. It actually is. We've got our sunrise here behind us. Yes. The best that we could do with a sunrise. (laughs) Um, So we're just, we're so glad that you're here to celebrate with us. You are in store for some amazing things that are going to happen today. We've got some testimonies that yes. are going to be shared, which absolutely incredible. I've heard, I haven't heard the one that's taped, but I have heard their testimonies. Yeah. Um, we've got a baptism first service. We've got two second service. So not that Easter isn't powerful enough already. I know, right? But we've got some baptisms in there. And then just based off the stories that I have heard on the radio this morning, I've already had the tears going. Oh, yeah. So just grab your tissues because it is just going to be one of those powerful, powerful days. It always is. It I always mean, is. You know, just what the day itself represents, it's it's just, it's already magnificent. So, yeah, it is. You know, the stone's already been rolled and... Victory you know, has been declared. Exactly. Death has been defeated. Exactly. So uh, on already, we have Mike Hoffman and Ryan Wilson. Ryan says he's on his way with half of the family. So we're so glad that you guys are taking your time right now to listen, make it on your way in, whatever it is that you're doing this morning <laughs> on this Easter. Not sure how many of you had to hide the Easter baskets so that you can make <laughs> it on time and do the Easter baskets afterwards. Um, we had them. I remember one time when I was little. Yeah. There was some stuff going on. I don't remember what it was. Oh, I remember. There were hot air balloons that had landed on the street. Oh my goodness. Uh, they had it a cold they hit a cold thing or whatever. And so we're out there looking at the um hot air balloon. Oh yeah. As we're supposed to get ready for church. I'm running down the street, you know, in my little stockings and all of that stuff. No shoes. And Easter baskets were still on the table. So by the time <laughs> we get back, we're having to you know, rush out the door and we're wanting to look at the Easter baskets. And my mom was like, nope, got to wait. Yeah. And so sometimes you just kind of have to say, hold on a minute and then we'll finish the fun later. Exactly. I mean, you know, you got to prioritize for the day. So, I mean. Sometimes it's just nice teasing the kids with, oh, yeah, this is what's to come. Something to look forward to. So uh, just so many amazing things that are happening here at World Harvest right now. We've got we a her do. night coming up. Yes, we do. We've got a her night coming up. Uh, nec- uh, no, uh, two April weeks. April the 14th. Yes. yes. Sunday, two April weeks. the 14th. Um, we The week out before that, I am looking forward to that solar eclipse coming up, though. Are you? I really am. Good. Uh, they fascinate me. I don't know why. See, now, I remember there's all this stuff with them. There are schools that are closing down that aren't even in the path. Because they're talking about the kids looking at the sun. Looking you know what? At the sun, yeah. We'd cut holes in paper plates and put another paper plate and watch the paper plate. And we cut holes in paper. And well, I mean, we did stuff like that. We didn't have the special glasses. We were watching it on paper. Yeah. Um, I think one year that we had it, it wasn't that long ago. It was seven um, years ago. Was it seven yeah. years ago? Okay. So it's like that's my one first of the reasons year that I was over at the school that I'm at now. But. We just stared like at the at the sh- the, the shadow. shadows that were on the ground and how different they were. Yeah. While the eclipse was happening, and that, that wasn't even a total eclipse. That's part of the whole so. biblical thing is that the fact that it was seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, this time they're all going through Nineveh. Yes. And then last time I forget. Um, or they're hitting several cities named Nineveh. Yeah. And I forget the other one from last time, several cities with the same name. Uh, and so that's where yeah. all of the biblical connections that people are drawing are coming from. Yeah. And the whole seven years. Um, so, but yeah, the kids are, I'm like, guys, I've been through lots of eclipses. You have? <laughs> you know, they just remember the one from a few years ago, which they were like a year old or yeah. whatever. They were itty bitty. So this is their first one and they're really excited about it. And I'm like, Psh, no big deal. Been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. <laughs> but exactly. it is exciting. It is for, and, and, and you know, to be, like I said, we went outside, we stared at the ground uh-huh. and that wasn't, like I said, that one wasn't even a total eclipse. No. And I know that where we're at, we're not going to see like the actual total, but it'll be close. When to, I saw a map, I think it was yesterday. I think we're in that 80 to 90% window. Yeah. We're kind of on the line somewhere yeah. and it depends on the map that you look at. Yes. So, yeah. It was, I mean, it's going to be awesome. And we won't see another one for 20 years. 20 years? It, it, that's what they were saying is like another 20 years. So. Oh, okay. I'm like, I'll still be around to see it. It's all good. I remember with the lunar eclipses, we used to really get into those. 
and my dad would be out there with the camera taking pictures. But then by the time he'd get the film developed (laughs) (laughs) back in the 35 millimeter days, this is before the filters and all of that stuff. And he'd have his zoom as much as he could and he'd have it on the tripod to keep the movement down. Right. All manual settings. I mean, it wasn't point and click. It was set this setting and get the light meter out and all of this stuff. Yeah. And, um, it was work. And it was a blurry dot. It was. <laughs> it was just a blurry dot no It'd matter what you get the blurry dot no matter what he would try. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's but gonna it's be, always that's exciting. Gonna be awesome. Yeah. It's going to be exciting. It's not something that we're like, you know, doing as a church. But I just find those things because God does so many wonderful things um, through science. Yeah. So I just really, that, that just really fascinates me. And yeah, no, do not go out. Do not look up. You will burn your eyes. You will be blind forever. Don't do <laughs> things like that. Um, you're not going to die, but you know, you will be blinded forever. At least that's what they've always told us. And so, unless you've got like, an, you know, those that bought it will like those hurt. special glasses. You won't be blind forever, but it will damage your eyes and hurt your but eyes. the ones that went and bought those special glasses, mm-hmm. those solar eclipse glasses, yeah, I wouldn't trust somebody that I didn't actually see and buy them from. But. I want to, I'm I, <laughs> I'm probably going to go old school yeah. and do the paper plate and show my students how we did it back with the dinosaurs, That'll you know, be, back in the day. But those were the fun ways. You know, li- the fun days. I'm life sorry, before Google. Yes. And life before Internet. Yes. Um, how we would do things. So they just find it fascinating. They, they do. think that it's like, ooh, the dark ages. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they kind of think the same way as I did when my grandparents would talk about their days. Mm-hmm. Um, when they settled here and their grandparents settled, you know, as pioneers and you know, I'm like, guys, we did have running water. You know? <laughs> we just didn't have internet. It was not, not the end of the world. Old. It was just before cell phones. It was just before Google. I, we have, you know, even the, 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 the transformation of music, yeah. you know, from the eight track to the album, to the tape. To the, what was it after that? The uh, CD. CD and then to... Uh, the digital. The digital. Like the iPod. The iPods. That's yeah. what I was trying to think of. The iPod. And now it all just goes on your phone. You don't have to have... You don't Sorry. have to do anything <laughs> at all whatsoever yeah. except for play this song. I and mean, I love can, how, you know, we've got our Bible now at our fingertips. Yeah. So we've got, with me. We've got so many things now at our fingertips that we didn't before, you know. Yes. And it's it's just it's so amazing how God will take something as technology that and he can spread that and use that mm-hmm. for his good. And yeah. speaking of technology and things at your fingertips, <gasps> Church if Center app. If you don't app. have the Church Center app, then you need to download that. It's available for iPhone and Android. Yes. So you can download that. There are so many things that you can do on the My Church app. Um My you, favorite are the biblical resources. Yes. The biblical resources, you can see um, pastor's notes, mm-hmm. you can see past sermons, you can listen to them through a podcast, a podcast several different ways that you can get the podcast there. Give online. You can give online. Calendar. You can ask in, uh, for prayer and give praise reports. You can see what we've got going on. Um, in the near future on the calendar, you can check in your kids mm-hmm. for uh, for youth ministry while you're still at home. Yeah, it's just it's so amazing. And it's so incredible. And it's just a way to keep you connected mm-hmm. with World Harvest. So I want to talk a little bit more about Easter, though. Oh, yes. Because it's such a fabulous um, an amazing experience if you truly soak it all in. And I had an opportunity on Friday at a church down in Edmond to go through their uh, Good Friday experience. Yes. And they had different stations and they had a booklet to walk you through those stations from the Last Supper to um, where you actually got to hold the silver, you know, and That's see incredible. what that weight and a little um, garden to represent the Garden of Gethsemane and feel the nails that were like what Jesus went, you know, went into Jesus' yeah. hands and actually got to touch a cross that was a replica of what he did and see what the Ark of the Covenant looked like. And, and at the end, take a hammer very similar to the hammer that they used to hammer those spikes into Jesus and hammer your own afflictions to a cross. It was such an amazing experience. That paired with Many years ago, I don't even remember. I think my son was already born, so it was probably at least 20 years ago, maybe a little bit more, um, where somebody had gone through Jesus's journey to the cross step by step with the medical. 
you oh, know, that's incredible. and so what his body was doing by the time he started this, because he hadn't eaten, he hadn't dr- drank anything from the time of the arrest right, right. and before that, because normally, you know, if he's going to pray, he wasn't sitting there eating a snack. No. So it had been probably a few hours since he had eaten anything and gone through all of that. So what his body was doing just from the fatigue from being up all night and then going through the carrying of the cross and he had a railroad tie which was kind of the weight of the cross beam that he had to carry. And then he dropped it and the whole sanctuary shook. And then the sound of the whipping and he put it on a a piece of wood. So you got to see the wood fly to represent what Jesus went through and talked. And he was a paramedic and had gone through several years. I think he'd even started medical school. And so he was going through the complete medical step-by-step of Jesus. And that was powerful. And then I, if you haven't been to Groom, Texas, to see uh, the cross at Groom, and then they've got the statues taking you to the journey of the cross and then to the tomb. And they actually have a replica of the shroud where you can see the imprint of his face. So each time I get to experience one of those things, yeah. Easter is even more powerful. And then combining all of those experiences together. So if you have not had a chance to go through or see, and I know there are some churches around and mm-hmm. some theaters that will do um, the Easter story with you know the crucifixion and the resurrection and all that, I highly suggest you do it because it just brings the Bible to life and just... It, it just it helps the understanding so much more it helps of what you it to goes. actually be in the moment at yes. the time that everything was happening to Jesus, and and you, you know, feel all the feels yes. and all of that. Yeah, it's like watching the Passion, which they did an excellent job. I still have not seen that. Oh my! If you have not seen it, I highly suggest it because it is about today. Yes, it is. And the things that the way that that it is just phenomenal. I mean the way that they did that. That's another resource, you know, for Easter. Um, And to look back at the things that, you know, I was reading about like Jim Caviezel who had played, excuse me, had played Jesus. He almost died. He almost died. A few different times. He had to have two different open heart surgeries after it was over. This is one of those things that shows that whenever um, somebody is bringing the gospel to life and bringing it to people that normally wouldn't, see it, the lengths that the enemy will go to, to try and stop it. Yes. Um, that, you know, how his body physically, the illness that he had gone through yeah. and all of those things just during filming. So it, there were times that they had to halt filming because of how ill he was. And this happened with other members on the cast it, and it crew as well. Him, yeah. So it's one of those things to show, you know, it's truth. When you have all of these things to show the lengths that the enemy is going to try and stop that from getting out. Well, not only that, I mean, he wanted to live out as much as he could physically yes. what Jesus had gone through because he wanted to make it as pos- real as possible. Mm-hmm. And what was funny is, is that when they filmed it, not only was he 33, but his initials were JC, Jim Caviezel. Oh, wow. Well, I never even and thought so, about that. so, you know, when he was talking to Mel Gibson about that, uh-huh. Mel Gibson was like, dude, you are really scaring me. You are. So yep. you're that the right was just person. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I can't wait to hear what pastors got for today, though. Yeah. I mean, testimonies, whenever we have testimonies, it's powerful already. Yeah. And I actually, I've been so busy, I haven't even had a chance to go through the notes. But definitely pull up and you know, get your notes ready. I see that we have Francis on right now as well. Uh, Just a quick note, we've got 10 seconds left. We do have part of our group from Uganda that is leaving today. So definitely keep them in your prayers today on this Easter. And we will meet you right back here after service. Bye. Bye, guys. Welcome this Easter morning. Happy Easter to everybody. Hopefully you're enjoying some time with your family on the beautiful weekend that we've had thus far. And uh, we're blessed and honored that you're here. You're going to be glad that you're here this morning. There is a power, pastor has a powerful message. The theme this morning is the good death. Can anything good come out of death? And pastor will be answering those questions. And then you're going to want to make sure that you're in the room uh, toward the end, we got we have an incredible yeah. special that you're. It, you might have to have a box of 
Back to Kleenex, <laughs> Back to Kleenex, is, there. Kleenex yeah. is next to you. So. Amen. Yeah. Well, welcome to World Harvest Church. Uh, I'm Brad Mendenhall. This is my beautiful wife, Tammy. We're the lead pastors here at World Harvest Church. I know we got many visiting with us here today, but we welcome you here to our home, to our spiritual family here today. Uh, just a couple things before we dive into our service, just want to mention. Number one is this. When you came in in your seat was this survey card. It says response card. Uh, this is something that we're asking everybody to fill out at some point through the service. Please do this. This is our way to connect with you as a church. As, as large, we'll probably have anywhere from 1,000 to 1,200 people through all three services this weekend. But we want to know that you were here. And so we would ask everybody to fill this out and uh, keep it handy because at the end of the service, uh, there's also another response that you're going to have at the end that I will get to. So keep that handy. But at some point, please fill this out and let us know of any prayer requests or any praise reports that you may have on that because we love to pray with you and we love to rejoice with, rejoice with you as well. Just whatever God's doing in your life. Because how many of you know God is alive today? Amen. Amen. He's alive and he is well today. He's not just some historical figure that we talk about a couple times a year. But he's alive. He's alive. And I don't know what your relationship is with him here today, but wherever it is at, I believe that we can take another step and go deeper in that relationship. Amen. So that's our cry. That's our mission today. As for every one of us in this place today, even our family that's online right now, for us to experience the presence of Jesus in a special way and for us to take the next step with him here. Amen. Amen. Just a couple other housekeeping items and then we'll get started today is uh, one thing is that we have moved our nursery. Anybody that uses our nursery, uh, the nursery is no longer up off the foyer over here, but it's around back off the kids' wing in the back. And our loop kids are now uh, going out into our uh, activity building. They're meeting out there for worship and they're meeting out there. Uh, second service, we are gonna have activity building set up for overflow. Uh, I'm glad you came to this service. You found seats. All right, that's a good thing. Most likely, second service will be packed full and we'll have to send people out there. But bottom line is this, we're glad that you're here today. Amen. We're glad that you're here in the house to help celebrate Jesus today. And, uh, we pray that you encounter him in a very special way. Let me pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day, Lord. Father, we thank you that you, so, you sent your son to die on a cross so that we can walk in freedom, that we don't have to come in perfect that, Father, you love us right where we're at, and we receive your love this morning. And everybody said, Amen. to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. Come on. And I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond. And just when I
all across this place, Lord. And we just come to you this morning with a heart full of gratitude. Lord, thank you so much for your sacrifice of Jesus Christ, for the gift of eternal life. We come to you humbly this morning. And we say thank you, Jesus. Lord, be magnified in this place. Thank you, Jesus. And I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. And sin separated the breach was far too wide but for the far side of the chasm you had me in your side so you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside cross you paid the debt I owed broke my chains freed my soul for the first time I had hope thank you Jesus for the blood applied thank you Jesus you have washed me wide So 
thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me place in which we were though we didn't know it to be lost without hope without future beyond, beyond this carnal life Jesus made the decision and it's a decision because it was a journey it just wasn't a singular step or a singular act from every motion that he took to take human form to come here on earth To allow himself to be tried and convicted for crimes that he didn't commit. 
to take every lash, every bruise, every abuse, physical, verbal, to then carry the cross all the way to the place where he would be crucified. He had to make a decision over and over and over again. In church, some of us may look at ourselves and, and see ourselves as less. But every time he made a decision, he looked at you and he said, you're worth it. Our Savior sees in us sometimes things we just can't see. But it's because of his greatness and his righteousness. And so he chose you because he loves you. He loves each and every one of us. And church, he's worthy to be praised. Let's give him some praise this morning one more time. Jesus, we thank you. We honor you this morning. You are worthy. We magnify you on this day and every day. You are worthy to be praised. Father God, we thank you for sending your son. Jesus, we thank you for every step that you took. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Do me a favor, church. Go ahead and take your seats. We're going to do something a little special this morning. We've got a baptism. Y'all ready for a baptism? I mean, that's why we're here, right? So we've got a brother getting baptized who's been here at the church for a few years. As soon as he gets situated, I'm going to have him say his name. He's trying to take all that time in the hot tub. <laughs> What's your name, brother? Josh Winfield. This is Josh Winfield, everybody, and I'm going to read a little bit of his testimony. My life before Christ he says, this, Christ has always been a part of my life, even in times I didn't know, understand, or deserve. He said, over time it became apparent that there was something missing, but he couldn't figure out what or who it was. So the story becomes, how did he become to know Christ? And just bear with me, it's, this has got a little time with it, but I promise you it's worth it. He said, as he was driving down the highway and and being overwhelmed with fear, hopelessness, and absolute despair, something happened. My classic rock radio station, anybody still listen to classic rock? My classic rock radio station went from crystal clear to static in an instant. I immediately hit the seek button and the numbers on the dial began to cycle endlessly. I've been in those places in the world where radio just doesn't exist anymore. After a minute or so, it abruptly stopped on my worship station, on a worship station, which at the time wasn't something I listened to very often. The song which I'm very familiar with now, but at the time had never heard before, was L. Holcomb's I Will Carry You. Anybody know that song? Still one of the few songs I know of that was written and sang from the perspective or of a voice of Jesus. The lyrics immediately spoke to me and I began to feel something within me that I have not felt before or since. As the music played, I heard the words and realized that something indeed was transpiring. The light from the sunset brought my eyes to the power lines and along the sides of the highway. They were crosses symbolizing our Lord. By the time the chorus started, I found myself barely able to see through the tears coming through my eyes. At that point, I felt the presence of him within the vehicle with me. Not as a passenger sitting next to me, but rather as all-encompassing spirit that had me completely surrounded me. It was as if the inside of the truck was a, some other realm that was separate from the rest of the world. The spirit of the Lord was upon me and was singing this song to me and embracing me as I'd never been embraced. He sang to me, I will carry you. Just as suddenly as it happened, it was over. But I was forever changed. My soul was renewed and I had a certain peace within me. This was the moment I found Jesus in all his glory. We just got to clap for that right there. What Christ
Christ has done in my life. Since that event, Jesus has been building me up in a way that I cannot fully understand, but I can undoubtedly feel. I've spent the last two years wrestling with what it meant for me to truly accept him. I pray that my body emerges in the same commitment and love that my heart has. Praise God for Jesus and God taking time for each and every one of us to show you how significant you are. Brother, you ready to be baptized? Come on, let's get it done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. That's awesome. Church, do me a favor. Take about a minute. Get up, come out of your seats and greet about two or three people that you've never worn. Tell them Jesus has risen this morning. Good morning, World Harvest Church. It is awesome to see you here this morning. If you could do me a favor, uh, let's give a round of applause to our first time visitors. There's a lot of new faces here this morning. If you could do me a favor and text WHC guest to 97,000, if this is your first time here, we've got a gift for you just to say thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Or you can stop by our Guest Connect area after service. It'll be on the right side of the foyer area this morning. So please take advantage of that. Also, when you came in, there were little white cards on your seat. If you wouldn't mind, take some time during the service, fill those out. And then after service, we've got white boxes out in the foyer, the big bright white boxes just drop those in the boxes after you get everything filled out I've got some I think we got some other things for those so please take advantage of that um, we've got three ways to give here at World Harvest Church we've got our text to give you've got our, our church connect app and we've also got black boxes at each one of the exits now World Harvest Church is a member supported church we do a lot of things here in Enid Oklahoma we do things beyond and around the world but we partner with you God blesses us in the things that you, you give and your tithes and offering. These are how we carry those things out, through missions and all different types of things. So we would encourage you. The Bible says, give and it shall be given. Press down, shake it together, and running over. So please, not the stock market or anything else you can think of has a better return of investment than sowing into the kingdom of God. So please take advantage of that. I've got a couple of announcements for you. Our first announcement, announcement is we've got her night. Ladies, we've got Her Night coming up. Okay. For those who don't know, Her Night is our women's ministry here at World Harvest Church. We've got one of, if not the best women's ministry in all of Oklahoma. So April 14th, if you don't believe me, April 14th, 6 p.m., come on out. Give it a try. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. So it'll be right here in the sanctuary coming out for that. We've got our Welcome to Church Luncheon coming up on the 21st of April at 12.30. That's gonna be right after second service. So if you've never met the, the leadership within the church, if you've been coming for the last couple of months or this is your first time and you'd like to meet the staff, <clears throat> the staff, um, or just find out what we're about and ask questions. This is the forum. You'll have plenty of time. We'll eat and we'll just share some time together. So please come on out for that. We'll be out in the activity building out back. So please take advantage of that. With that, we're going to transition to the next part of our service. So let's pray. 
Father God, we just thank you for this intimate time in worship. We just thank you for everything that you do through us, in us, and around us, Father God. We just thank you for your presence, and we just give you all the glory today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Good morning, World Harvest Church. Welcome to the 9 o'clock service. Anybody excited about Easter today and being in church? Amen. Woohoo! Come on, how many of y'all know it's not about an Easter bunny? It's not about eggs. It's about Jesus Christ here today. He is alive and he is well. So we welcome you here in our 9 o'clock service. And of course, a packed out house here today and uh, had a packed out room last night even. And of course, one more service to go. So what an incredible opportunity to come together as just brothers and sisters in the Lord to worship the risen king. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior here today. I want to pause to say hello to our online family, everybody that's watching at one of our internet connection points. We're glad that you tune in with us here today. Come on, everybody that's here, let's welcome the online family today. Thank you for watching today, being a part with us. Hey, give us a shout out. Let us know where you're watching from. Another bit just of information I want to give you. I've been talking about this for the last few weeks, but if you're visiting with us here today, you don't know what's going on. But uh, we have a team going to Uganda, Africa this week. In fact, uh, uh, Anita, Wilma, and Dale are leaving this afternoon at 1.30 out of Oklahoma City to head on over. And then Tammy and I will be leaving out on Wednesday afternoon, uh, making the track over there for uh, about two weeks of ministry over there. Going to be ministering to pastors and key church leaders, expecting around probably 1,500 pastors and church leaders to show up for five different seminars that we'll be hosting over there uh, during that time. And I just want to pause to say thank you for all of y'all that have donated and given and sown into the missions trip. It costs quite a bit to get over there to conduct these seminars, but we believe it's an investment well worthy of its cause to speak into pastors because if you want to change a nation, you speak into the pastors. Amen. I love doing crusades, but there's something about it. speaking and imparting into the pastors that will create a lasting change. You create change there. You impart into them. They're going to carry that mantle on. You know, every day of the week, 365 days a year, they're going to make that impact. So thank you for all of y'all that have sown. Uh, continue to pray with us as the team travels. Uh, keep us in your prayers. We'll be back in the States on uh, April the 16th. We'll be back home. And so that time period, keep that in mind. Be praying for us every day. Pray for protection. Just pray the power of God just flows mightily. Pray for an impartation and a spiritual deposit over there. But also continue to pray for the financial need. We're still about $5,000 short of meeting our projected budget for that trip. And so y'all be praying that that comes in. And if you haven't had a chance to sow a seed you'd like to, you can use your church app or give online or give in the boxes there. Just mark it Uganda Mission Strip there. We'll get that to where that needs to go. But we're looking forward to having some great uh, reports. Facebook does not work in Uganda very well. I believe the country has that shut down, which I don't know, maybe that's not a bad thing. Uh, but uh, we will be posting updates to uh, WhatsApp. It's called WhatsApp is what is used in third world countries a lot. So if you want to follow along what's going on, you can follow along there. Uh, you can message me. I'll give you the link. It's, there's a group called WH. Uh, Uganda 2024. Just search for that, WHC Uganda 2024 on WhatsApp, and you can follow us along there. But anyway, looking forward to some great times. We're going to have great services while we're gone, uh, so keep showing up. These next two Sundays are going to be absolutely incredible. Well, let's get our Bibles out. We want to dive into the Word of God here today and uh, got some I believe uh, we've already had some incredible worship, but I believe I've got a, a good word for you here today, and, um, and we're, just, we're going to just wrap up our time with some uh, just incredible worship to our Father God and hearing some testimonies. But uh, I want to dive into a message, and of course, we know that what we're celebrating here this weekend... Uh, we had some fun with it here at World Harvest Church. We had an Easter egg hunt yesterday and had a lot of people show up for that. Of course, we know it's not about Easter eggs. It's not about the Easter bunny. But I ran a couple of, across a couple of dad jokes that just wanted to share with you in case anybody needs some good dad jokes today kind of relation, related to Easter. But do you know what you call a rabbit with fleas? A rabbit with fleas. What do you call a rabbit with fleas? You call it a Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Isn't that a good one? Of course, I love this one. What, what do you call a line of rabbits walking backwards? Line of rabbits walking backwards, guess what it's called? A receding hairline. Yeah, come on now. 
Woo, dad jokes, I love them right there, amen. Some of y'all better write those down because you'll need to remember those there, amen. Let's go to the Father God one more time in prayer as we dive into the message now. The Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the time of just worshiping you, Lord God. We've, we've sensed your presence here. Lord, on this beautiful Easter day, as we've assembled together here in this nine o'clock service, Lord God, people from different walks of life, people from Enid, people from across the state, people from all over the world are gathered together here for these few moments, Lord Jesus. We're together in a corporate setting, Lord, not to just observe or just to listen to preaching or music, but Lord, to encounter you. Father, that's our heart's cry here today is that we all here today experience you, we experience your power, we experience your presence, we experience your goodness here today. Lord, as I stand on this stage, I'm reminded of the limitations of my own humanity, of not knowing what's going on in each one of these lives that are hearing my voice right now. But Lord, I take confidence and security in knowing that even though I don't, you do. You know every person here today. You know them by name. You know where they've been. You know where they're at right now. Lord, most importantly, you know where you have for them to go. So, Lord, would you give us all here today the eyes to see in the Scriptures what you want us to see. Give us the ears to hear what your Spirit is speaking into our heart right now. Lord, give us the wisdom to wrap our mind around the kingdom principle that we'll talk about here over these next few moments. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say it with me. Amen and amen. Open up your Bible with me to Matthew chapter 27 or click on your device. Uh, if you are a version Bible app user, if you go to your events tab on there, you can actually find the notes to my message here today. And I'm not going to speak a long time because we've got some other special elements we want to get to. But here we are, Easter weekend. It is here. Happy Easter to you. It seemed like Jesus was just in the manger just a few weeks ago. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, We're celebrating him in the manger. Now he's going to the cross. Time does fly by so fast. And Here we are on this Easter weekend. I've had people ask me, Pastor, man, Easter is really early this year. What's the deal with that? And I did look this up. And the reason why Easter changes, Easter is not a set holiday like Christmas. But Easter changes because it is based upon the lunar eclipses of of the lunar cycles of the moon. And and just kind of interesting facts, inquiring minds may want to know today uh, Easter or Celebration Resurrection Sunday is set up on the, it's, it's the first Sunday after the first full moon that happens on or after March the 21st. That's how the Easter t- date is set every year. So that's why we're having an early Easter this year is because we had the full moon there right around March the 21st. And so what does that have to do with my message today? I'm sure you want to know. Absolutely nothing. Interesting fact. But I do want us to look here in Matthew chapter 27 because last week we talked about the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And of course, today is the culmination of what we call Holy Week. And just so many events took place from that Sunday that Jesus entered into Jerusalem triumphantly to where we're at here today on this Sunday, where we know Jesus. He went through so many events. You know, it was Thursday night there. The Last Supper took place and went into the Garden of Gethsemane and where he was in such agony over the events that was getting ready to transpire that it said he sweat great drops of blood. It was so agonizing to him. And it's in those night hours that uh, Judas brings the the guards there and Jesus is arrested. And it's through the nighttime that Jesus is tried there in several different, three different occasions that he's taken to, but then he's beaten severely. He's whipped severely. He goes through this brutality that most prisoners did not uh, live through. It was so gruesome. But it was through that morning hours there on that Friday morning that he is uh, forced to carry his cross. And I was just thinking, you know, if newspapers were around during that time, what were some of the headlines? What might they have been during that week of Holy Week? I wrote these down in my notes, you know. uh, Maybe the headline of the paper for that Sunday, Palm Sunday, probably read something like this. The king of the Jews enters Jerusalem. The crowd goes wild. But by Thursday, we know that the attitude of the crowd had changed. And I wonder if there would have been a newspaper around at that time if the headline made it said this. King of the Jews disappoints the crowds. The crowds are stirring. On Friday, though, we see what Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary. He's taken there to die on the cross. And I wonder if the headline of the paper that day might have said this. 
The people turn on Jesus, king of the Jews, is dead. Maybe the Saturday headline of that paper might have read this, Jesus' followers in great, in great dismay. But Sunday, I believe the headline would have said this, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Amen. And that's the headline of what we're doing here today is that Jesus is alive. Amen. Look at Matthew chapter 27. I'll just... Uh, Kind of, we've been looking at this journey of Jesus that he took going to the cross, and I want to just read through several scriptures. I love the scriptures. We, we have a great value for the scriptures here at World Harvest Church, and so I want to let the scriptures just speak for themselves here in several verses in Matthew chapter 27. Jesus' journey to the cross, and starts out in verse 31. I could read so much more, but for time, I don't have that kind of time today. Matthew 27, verse 31, New King James says this, And when they had mocked him, Jesus, they took the robe off of him, they put his own clothes upon him, and they led him away to be crucified. Now as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to, to bear the, his cross, verse 33. And when they had come to a place called Golgotha, that is to say the place of the skull, they gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And just a side note, that was something that prisoners or people that was being crucified was given to help dull the pain, to dull their senses. Jesus, when he realized what it was, he refused it. To me, that even speaks greater volumes to what he went through. Verse 35, then they crucified him. They divided his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them, and for the clothing they cast lots. 30, verse 36, sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Verse 37, and they put up over his head the accusation written against him. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Side note how right they were. Verse 38, then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right, one on the left. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, you who destroyed the temple and built it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest also, mocking with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others himself he could not save. If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. Verse 43. He trusted in God. Now let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Verse 44. For even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same thing. Verse 45, now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, that's another about noon until three in the afternoon, there was darkness over all the land. Verse 46, about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sakbathani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Verse 47, some of those who stood there when they heard that said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and took a sponge filled with sour wine and put it on a reed, offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Verse 51. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked and the rocks were split. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Coming out of the graves of his res of, after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Verse 54, so when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, come on, everybody read this part with me, truly this was the Son of God. What an amazing story, but yet what a gruesome story of Jesus' death. The most horrific punishment of that time, the death on the cross, to be crucified. We can't even fathom in our American mindset in the century that we live in today what Jesus truly went through. It was just the worst that you can even imagine. The images we see of Jesus dying on the cross with a little trickle of blood down his forehead, let me tell you, that was not the reality of it. When Jesus died on the cross, he was merely just a hunk of flesh. In fact, Isaiah prophetically speaking, it said they couldn't even recognize him as a man. He was beaten and bruised and brutalized so severely. But Jesus died, and we can say it today that Jesus died really a good death. 
a good death. And that's really what our subject of, for these few moments that we're talking about today is the good death. Can anything good come from death? Here just recently, I read a story of a man named Donald Cash. Donald Cash was in his 50s, and Donald had a dream that he wanted to climb the highest peaks in all the world. He wanted to climb the seven of the highest peaks on the seven continents of the world. And by the time he hit 54, he had climbed six out of seven. He had one left to go, the mother of them all, Mount Everest. It was in late 2018 that he quit his software sales job, and he began to train to climb Mount Everest. He had climbed six of the others. He was ready to go conquer the last one, his dream. He put everything he could. He put his training into it. He put his mind into it. And it was in May of 2019 that he set out on a track to climb the great Mount Everest. After many grueling days, of, he finally made it to the peak, the pinnacle. And, of course, Tammy and I, we, we love to watch the documentaries. And one of her favorite documentaries is watches anything to do with climbing Mount Everest. So I feel like I'm well-versed in climbing Mount Everest because I am a couch junkie when it comes to this stuff. I'm a couch expert. Donald Cash, at 54 years of age, he reached the pinnacle, and I've heard it said many times that there is no video, there is no picture that captures the magnificence of the beauty of standing 26,000 feet at the pinnacle of Mount Everest. He took it in, but at about the moment he took it in, he fainted. The people with him, they revived him, and they realized something was wrong with him, and so... They got him down to what's called a Hillary step. And it's that Hillary step that Donald Cash, at age 54, fainted again and never revived. He died on Mount Everest. It was said of Donald Cash that he said this, that if I ever die doing something that I love, he said, if especially climbing a mountain, he says, don't bury me back home. He says, leave me on the side of the mountain. He said, I'd much rather die fulfilling my dream than die in a hospital bed. Now, when I heard that story about Donald Cash, I'm like, oh, man, that was a good death. Dying, doing something that he dreamed of doing in his life. You know, back when I was in high school, I went in for a, a medical procedure, a, a dental procedure to remove some molars, some embedded molars, and they put me under uh, gas and knocked me out. And it was during that time that I distinctly remember being pass, you know, knocked out and the dentists are doing their thing, but I distinctly remember in this moment of time, I was in high school there, I was probably 16, 17 years of age, I remember suddenly feeling like just in this blackness, suddenly just like this, just kind of this weird thing happened, and it was like all of a sudden I got this tunnel vision, and I seen this bright light at the end of this tunnel, and I felt like I was being pulled to that light, and I just realized the other day, you know what, I think I was about to die. I was having an out-of-body experience, and of course, I think I started to go into a little bit of seizure, and so the anesthesiologist there, back when I was gone, they pulled me out of, and this kind of, when it came out, it was kind of frantic. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I wonder if I just about died. Well, I have never had another procedure done until last October. And so Tammy, she thought it very fitting for us at the age that we're at of being over 50, she decided to get us couples colonoscopies. How romantic. <laughs> I don't suggest you do that for your anniversary. <laughs> and so we go in in October, and in the back of my mind, I have this crazy thought. It wasn't necessarily a fear. You could call it maybe more of a concern because I remember being put under, and I knew that you know, I was going to have to be put under again. And I had this thought, wouldn't it be crazy if I died having a colonoscopy? I'm like, that would not be a good death. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I can't imagine what the headline might say. Local pastor dies. Anyway, I'll leave the rest of that up to you. <laughs> I mean, like when my time comes, you know, when, and our time's going to come for all of us as long as, you know, the Lord doesn't come back. We're all going to go by the way of the grave. That's the human experience. But, you know, when my time goes, man, I want to go out, man, having a good death. Anybody want to talk about you know, I, I don't want to die tripping over a crack in a sidewalk. You know, I want to, I, I, let me be eaten by a grizzly bear on a hunting trip or something. You know, something magnificent. You know, let me die preaching in the pulpit. You know what I'm talking about. Something cool. A good death. A good death. 
Coming back to Jesus here this morning, I just, I can't help but thinking about the death that Jesus experienced. A good death, a good death. Here today we're celebrating the promise of the resurrection, the benefits of the resurrection, but there is no resurrection without somebody dying first. And the good news is this, we have resurrection life today that we can experience because Jesus died a good death. He paid the price for our sins and we are alive today because Jesus is alive. A couple things I wrote down in my notes here. If you're taking notes, write this down. Jesus' death was a good death. It was a good death. The abundant life that we can have today is because of what Jesus Christ did for us. And I believe the reason why Jesus was able to go through what he did, he didn't have to. He could have backed out of that at any moment. He said he could have called legions of angels, could have showed up, and man, could have delivered him. But he willingly went through the brutality that he went through for you and I today, for your life, for my life. He went through that. And it's in John chapter 10. I don't have the scripture to refer to you right here on the screen or in your notes. But Jesus said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. Let me tell you, there's a life that Christ paid the price for on the cross of Calvary so that you and I could live not just a humdrum life, not just to get by life, but he said, I come to give you a life and life more abundantly. Because of his death, his good death, he see, he didn't stay in the grave. That's the cool thing. How many of y'all know that? Amen. Come on. We talk about Jesus on the cross. Jesus isn't still on the cross today. Come on. Jesus is alive and well today. And anybody excited about Jesus being alive and well today? It's in John chapter 12 that Jesus foretells about the death that he's getting ready to experience. And for the disciples, they didn't get it. Jesus gave several kind of prophecies, kind of foreshadowing things to try to get them prepared. But they, in the back of their mind, I'm convinced, they thought Jesus was going to go into Jerusalem and run the Romans out and set up their earthly kingdom. That's what they were excited about when they welcomed him on Palm Sunday. But they realized Jesus wasn't here to run the Romans out. They were disappointed. It's in John chapter 12 and verse 23 and verse 24 in the English Standard Version that Jesus said this. He said, Jesus answered them. He said, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. This is right before he goes to the cross, before all the events that took place. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a, everybody say it with me, a what? Grain of wheat falls into the earth and it, come on, and it what? It dies. It remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Jesus uses the example of a seed. I've got a little wheat seed right here in my fingers, and it's so small that you can't even see it here. But this little wheat seed, we understand the principle of a seed. When that seed is thrown into the ground, when it's planted into the ground, it says the, 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 uh, uh, the, the people that are smart, the smart people there, uh, tell us that that seed actually dies. What's inside dies. It gives its life, but out of its death comes life. It begins to sprout up, and, it, and the Bible even talks about there's, it starts with the seed, but then there's the shoot that's out of the seed, then it breaks out of the ground, then there's the stalk, and then there's the full plant. Jesus is using that same analogy of that wheat seed here to talk about how what he is getting ready to do for us, he's getting ready to give his life, not so that it be dark and gloomy. He's getting ready to give his life so the price for sin, the price for the sin of mankind will be paid and that anybody who believes on him after that will be saved and experience the abundant life that he came to give. That abundant life that is free for us to walk in here today. Jesus was a seed that went into the ground. He was the seed that was planted that now provides the access and gives us access to abundant life that we may walk in with Jesus today. Come on, anybody ready to experience the abundant life of Jesus Christ today? Here we are. Amen? I read a little story here. Let me just share it with you. A story of a little boy who built a sailboat. It was one of those sailboats that took quite, quite some time to build. It was made all out of wood. He, he built the, the boat of it. He built the sails of it. And he was so excited to take the sailboat out to the local lake to try it out. He got out there, he put it on the water, and sure enough, a breeze came out, come just down, coming off the mountainside there. The sails of his little sailboat just billowed out, and the sailboat began to do its thing. The little boy was so ecstatic. He was so happy to see his sailboat out there in the water. He looked at the way he built it, and he had this, just such a proud moment. But then he realized the wind that had came down off the mountainside began to his, blow his sailboat out into deeper waters. 
where the waves were. He began to cry out. He knew he couldn't go out and rescue his sailboat because he would endanger his own life as well. But as he began to cry, he began to weep because he just, the sailboat began to get further and further and further away. After a while of seeing his sailboat just sail off into the distance, he ran home crying to mom. And through his tears, as his mom asked him, what's wrong, son, what's wrong? He said, my beautiful sailboat has sailed away. All that time that I've spent building my sailboat, it's for loss now. It was about a week later that the little boy was walking down the street downtown and walked by a secondhand store, and he noticed in the window was his sailboat. Oh, my goodness, he was so excited. The sailboat that he had been mourning for the week, he saw the sailboat there. He ran in, and he talked to the owner and said, Sir, that's my sailboat in the window. I'm here to take my sailboat home. And the owner said, I'm sorry, son. That's my sailboat. I bought that just a couple of days ago. The boy said, You don't understand. I made that sailboat. I created it. I made it by hand. He took the owner over there and showed him. He said, He see this little thing that I put this together. And he showed it on the bottom where he kind of scribbled out his initials on the sailboat. And the owner of the store said, I'm sorry, son. He said, this sailboat's for sale. I rightfully bought it. It's, not, it's mine now. So the little boy said, how much do you want for the sailboat? And the owner said, well, how much do you have? And he said, well, just give me a minute. So the little boy went home and got his piggy bank, where he had been saving up for years for something special. He brought the piggy bank back to the store and laid it on the counter, and he busted it open, and all the money fell out, and they began to count out the money, and the owner of the store said, wow, look at this. You have exactly enough money to buy your sailboat back. The boy was ecstatic. He was ecstatic. And as the boy began to run out the store, he began to weep and he began to cry. And he grabbed his sailboat and he said to his sailboat, he says, you are my boat. You're twice my boat now. First, you're my boat because I made you. And second, because I bought you. What a beautiful picture what Jesus has done for us. He made us, and then in our humanity, we pulled away from him, but he went to the cross and he paid the price for you and I. The death of Jesus was a good death. How many of y'all would say that? The second thing I want to just wrap up here today is this. I wrote this down in my notes. If you're taking notes, write this down. We don't have to physically die to have a good death for ourselves. In fact, real quickly, there's three deaths that I wrote down here in my notes for us to experience, for us that is required so that we could experience the goodness of God. I'm sure if I was to ask you this question here today, how many of y'all want to experience the goodness of God in your life? Every one of y'all would say, yes, I do. I do. Three things have got to happen. Number one is this. You can write this down. One death that is required of us is our death at the cross. That's what I call salvation here today. For us to experience the goodness of God, it requires our death, not the physical death, but a death at the cross. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says this. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ, he has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. This is the beautiful thing about when we go to the cross and we die, we lay our life down, we surrender to Jesus Christ. Our old life no longer has a bearing on our now and our present. Come on, how many of you are glad your old life no longer has a bearing up on your now? Come on, we're not messed up. We're not broken. We're not, not, not mistakes. If you're in Christ, and how many of y'all know Jesus Christ today? Let me hear you today. Come on, if you know Christ and your old life is behind you, let's get our eyes off our old life and let's get to our eyes upon the new life that we have in Jesus. It requires a total surrender. This is my question for you today. Have you totally surrendered at the cross to the life Jesus has for us? Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 says this. Galatians 2, verse 20. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Listen, we can't be good enough to get to God. Salvation only comes by surrendering our life to Jesus Christ and living a, by, living a life of faith. And taking our salvation by faith. Amen. So the first one is we've got to die our to ourself at the cross. Number two is this. You can write this down. we got to die to our flesh daily. Our death of our flesh daily, that's another death we got to experience. See, walking in victory is not just a one-time surrender, but it's a daily surrender to Jesus Christ. 
Our salvation is a one-time surrender, but walking in victory is a daily surrender. Jesus says in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, he told the disciples, he says, if, if any of you want to be my follower, he said, you must give up your, your own way. And you must take up your cross how often? Come on, take up your cross on how often? Come on, our life, we've got to surrender. We've got to die to our flesh daily. Amen? To live a Christian life requires us to die daily. I've heard it said of marriage. How many married, How many of y'all are married today? Let me see you. I've got a couple of y'all are excited about being married. Some of you are like, uh. I've heard it said there's nothing more terrifying, nothing more frustrating, nothing more disappointing than two selfish persons, two selfish people trying to get along. For a marriage to work, it requires both to die. Isn't it interesting they call it the marriage altar? It's where two people come to die to their individuality to become one flesh. Come on, where's all my parents in the house today? Come on, parents, where you at? How many of y'all know to have a successful household, parenting requires what? <laughs> death to yourself oh I remember those days before we started having kids when it was just Tammy and I we could watch what we wanted on TV we could stay up as late as we wanted to we could do whatever we wanted we could go out and eat if we wanted to but man when we had twins our world changed our life all of a sudden became death to us as individuals became about our family same way it is with our Christian walk with God to live successfully it takes a daily surrender to Jesus Christ amen and third of all, our death, the third death we got to have happen to us is our death to worry and needing to control our circumstances. Needing the control of our circumstances. Hmm. See, the highest level of faith that we can have, I'm convinced, is this. It's believing in the Word of God, speaking the Word of God, but keeping ourselves in the place of complete trust our trust in God with wherever we're at in our life. That's the highest level of faith. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, Paul so boldly said, we know that all things, how many things? We know that all things, what? Work together for good to those who love God. Do you love God today? This is one of the hardest surrenders that we have to have in our life is surrendering our circumstances to God. Because human nature, we want to control. We worry. We fret. True faith is taking that problem and putting it in God's hands, saying, God, I trust you with it. A.W. Tozer quoted this. He said, the reason why many are still troubled, still seeking, still making little forward progress, because they haven't yet come to the end of themselves. We're still trying to give orders and interfering with God's work within us. How true that is true that is can anything good come from death the death of Jesus on the cross what did it produce for us eternal life abundant life Jesus died we're required to die as well here over these next few moments we're going to go into some special worship some testimonies but I want you to use this as a moment just to reflect on your own life on this concept of a good death let me pray over us. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your life. We thank you for giving your life on the cross so that we may live. You're such a good God. Lord, as you look around this sanctuary here today, Lord God, there's many different levels of relationship in this room right now with you. Lord, there's some people in this room that know you deeply. Lord, there's others in this room that are still trying to figure this out. Lord, I thank you for your presence here today. Lord, speak to each heart over these next few moments in a special way. In Jesus' name. My name is Christina Matthews. I have been attending World Harvest Church since 2009. My husband, Matt, and I were coming here um, as he was going through pilot training, and we just wanted him to find a church home for us while he was here. And this was the first church we came to, and uh, I've been here ever since. After pilot training, uh, Matt was faped, so we were gonna be here for three more years, uh, which we were really excited about. Within the next year, 
Matt would become sick and we weren't sure what was going on. He was having migraines and couldn't clear his ears so he was off flying status. We would continue to see doctors on and off base um, and they weren't able to give us any answers. Finally, they suggested that they would do a brain biopsy and this is in 2012 when they wanted to do this brain biopsy and we had been married just over three years at this point. After the brain biopsy, he became pretty sick. He had what appeared to be a seizure during the recovery process um, and he was admitted to ICU. The next morning when I went in to see him, one of his eyes was fully dilated and I knew something was not right. The doctors came in and said they're gonna run some more tests on him after um, they had run the test and said that his brain was swelling and they were gonna um, put him on a ventilator to give him oxygen to his brain. We just continued to pray and believe that he was gonna be fully healed. The next day, the doctor came in and said that he was brain dead. And that was not something that we um, anticipated at all. It was a shock to all of us. I immediately called our pastor, Pastor Brad and Tammy, and they came and met with us along with several other members of the church and just began to believe and pray with us that he would be completely restored and completely healed and that a miracle would just take place. Toward the end of that first week, we started talking about turning off the ventilator. I had to get to a point where I just had peace about it, knowing that God was in control of everything. The next day, we decided to turn off his ventilator, and I just knew that if he came back, great, and if he didn't, it would be fine, um, that God had a plan for this. We had the machine turned off, and Matt went to heaven, and we just rejoiced in knowing that he was there. Even though the outcome wasn't what we had pr prayed for and believed for, we knew that God still had a plan for my life and for whatever he was gonna do with me. Um, I was just accepting of the outcome that we had to deal with. I stayed in Enid, mostly because of the church, because this was our church home and this is where we felt most connected. So I stayed here and continued just to dive deeper into the ministry of the church and help out with different areas. Um, and then I just remember praying and saying, God, I want to I want to be married again. So over the next a couple of years, I just was doing my own thing, kind of just enjoying life, being happy. So in 2014, uh, God brought another man into my life who is a state trooper. I met him while working at the courthouse. He came to church with me the first weekend we were dating. I just remember feeling like this is someone that I could potentially spend the rest of my life with. Over the next year we dated and I got to meet his family and he met mine and, and now we've been married almost 10 years and we have three beautiful children. I look at them and I just am so grateful for the blessings that they are in my life and that he has blessed me immensely more than I anticipated. It's so nice to see where I'm at now, to look back and see God's hand in it all. And knowing that even in Matt's death, he was bringing life to me, through my husband, through my children. And he had that planned out before I was ever created. Just know like you're never going to be in a place where he can't work, he can't use you, he can't bring you something beautiful because he brings beauty from ashes all the time. And I'm an example of that. All my life I've been carried by grace. Don't ask me how, cause I can't explain. It's not this short of a miracle. Blessings that I don't deserve. I've got some scars, but that's how you learn. It's not this short of a miracle. I'm here. I think it over and it doesn't matter. I know it comes from above. I've got miracles on miracles. So I would.
my story. I was a principal here in Enid uh, for several years, and I was incredibly blessed there. I was the Oklahoma Principal of Excellence. I was the Oklahoma Foundation of Excellence a Medal Award winner, and I was just blessed and to be recognized on state and national platforms and to be influential. Even Carrie Underwood gave me a couple shout outs, so that was pretty awesome. In October of 2020, um, I got COVID. It affected uh, my body in, in some crazy ways. I ended up being in a wheelchair for a long time. I went nine months without being able to drive. I, have, I currently have six doctors and five are specialists that I see, and it just affected numerous organs. Unfortunately, I ended up having to uh, resign my career of uh, 23 years in education. That was, was one of the toughest things I had to do. Education was such a huge part of my life, and those kids were such a huge part of my life. And I lost it all. I became a man who wasn't able to provide for my family, who was constantly going to test after test for all these different doctors trying to figure out what to do. I really didn't even, don't even recognize myself or who I was because so many things in my life changed. I mean, there was a death to who I used to be and I became someone completely different and it was not my choice at all. And I finally got to a point a few months ago where I told God, you know, there's so many poor people out there that are qualified than me. If you could use me in my brokenness, even though I'm not who I used to be, if you can use me, my life is yours and I abandon all for the sake of the call. And shortly after that, after I made that declaration and cry out to God, Jonathan reached out to me and wanted to meet with me. We started talking about me leading fuel. I could give you a million reasons why I couldn't lead fuel. Whether it's the lack of strength, the neurological issues that I face um, and processing and thinking, but I just cried out to God if he could use me. And there was that opportunity, and I said yes. And there is so much power when you say yes to God, because in my weakness and in my brokenness, I learned so much about myself. Because when I started leading that group, I was surrounded by people who were ex-convicts, who had been addicted to drugs, who 
had gone through things that nobody should ever go through. And I started leading them. And I realized that God had anointed me to set the captive free and to heal the brokenhearted. And that there was anointing on my life and that there was a greater call on my life. These people affected my life in a great way just by God using me to affect their lives. And I started to truly realize that even though the person that I used to be died, then I'm not that person anymore, that God still has a purpose. And even in the midst of my pain and adversity, that He is still there, that does not change. God is in the business of taking a nobody and turning them into somebody right in front of everybody. And He doesn't care what anybody has to think. It's His plan. Even in the pain, He's been there. Even through the adversity, He has been there. And I see God through a lens that I never could have imagined because of the pain that I've been through. I know there are people out there that are hurting, and we're talking about, you know, on Easter Sunday, the resurrection. Listen, your life may be in that Good Friday moment. There may be death around you, and you may be dying to a certain part of your life. Or maybe you are on Saturday where you're buried six feet under despair and pain. But I want you to know that Sunday's on the way. And that resurrecting power, that spirit, the same spirit that resurrected Jesus Christ, abides in you and lives within you. Jesus, I'm telling you, He's the lover of my soul. Jesus, I will, oh, I will never let you go.
you for your name, Lord God. And it's not just a name, but it's what you did for us. You gave your life so willingly. You surrendered to the abusers. You allowed yourself to be mutilated and brutalized. And you willingly went to the cross. Such pain, so gruesome of an experience. But you look past the cross to see us, to see the benefits of what would take place as you died a good death. So Lord, here today, we want to die the good death as well with you. In Jesus' name. If you would, I would ask that you take your survey card out. Just This is the close of our service. Everybody, the survey card that I ask you to fill out at the beginning of the service, if you would take this out, find you a pen. There's pens in the seat backs in front of you. Please, we would like for everybody to fill one of these out. Okay? If you'll turn to the back of it, there's four boxes at the bottom of that. This is your response to this entire service here today. Jesus died a good death so that we may live. So I'm going to ask everybody in this room right now to mark one of these four boxes. Now, you don't know what the boxes are, so let me tell you what they are. Mark A, if you already are in a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you know Jesus, at some point in your life you have surrendered to him, you died the good death at the cross and made him your Lord and Savior. If that's you, mark that. Now, you may want to hear all these four before you mark a box. Mark B, if you're here today and you say, you know what, I need to begin a relationship with Jesus. I'm not sure if I've got one. I'd like to begin one. Mark B. Now, please be very honest with us here today. C is this. Mark C, if maybe you're not ready, but you would like to consider it a little bit more first. You'd like some more information first. You're just like, I don't know. Mark C. But again, be, please be honest. Mark D, if you're here today, and you're just like, you know what? I just, I don't ever intend on making that decision. We respect that. Of course, our prayer is this. If you don't mind, we would like to be praying over you. And my prayer is, if you come back next year for Easter, that you mark A, or at least B. Please be honest. Mark the box. Prayer team, I'm going to ask that you come to the front at this time. And this is what I want you to do with this card. Hold on to this card. Here in just a moment, we're getting ready to dismiss this service. And when you go out the doors, you'll see some boxes. Not the offering boxes, but some boxes for the survey card. Please drop that card in the box. And again, we would like to know more about you. Fill this out, and especially mark a box. A, B, C, or D. Let us know where you're at because we want to pray with you. Now, before I step off the stage here and Pastor Jonathan comes and dismisses us, I do want to just mention this. I've got a team up here at the front that knows how to pray. And more importantly, they love to pray with people. And if you're here today and you need prayer for anything in your life that you're going through, I'm going to invite you. You can come now or you can wait till Jonathan dismisses us to come down the front for prayer. Second part is this. If you mark B on your box, you're ready to begin a relationship, this team is ready to pray with you to turn your B into an A, okay? So if you mark B, I would invite you here in just a moment. Don't go out the back doors. Come down here to the front and tell the team, hey, I mark B. First of all, we're going to rejoice because that means that you're dying a good death today and you're going to start experiencing the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. I'm not here on stage telling you you're going to have a perfect life and all, all unicorns and rainbows. I'm talking about you're going to have some help through the crazy life that we're living. That's the difference of having Jesus in your boat. Amen. Jonathan, wrap us up. Pray for us. Y'all get anything out of that? If you haven't already heard or understand, Jesus has risen. Today, we serve a living God. And so as we leave, as we part company, I want to do this. I want to make an invitation. 
please don't make it next Easter that we see some of you again. You've been here with us. We've worshiped together. We've experienced the presence of God together. Your family, we love you, and we look forward to worshiping with you again. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for this time, this worship. Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice on the cross, and we thank you for rising again, carrying with the keys. Welcome back, World Harvest family. That was just so powerful. Yeah, no It's so hard to find words for it. The yeah. testimonies, the music, being in the sanctuary during worship, just feeling <laughs> um, all the feels and everything there. Service for first service was packed. Yes, it was. And that when you have that many people in service, there's another level that you yeah. feel during worship as opposed to when um, there's not as many people that are there, like on a bad weather day or right. Christmas morning or something like that. So it's just been a very powerful, powerful Sunday today already, you know, and we've both been in here as we're watching things and mm -hmm. listening and all of that dry in the eyes and um <laughs> yeah all of that so not just the allergies it's you can yeah, almost the emotion. feel how proud yes. god is on this day exactly. actually in that sanctuary you can feel the sense of you know i can't i, I this is why my son came to this mm -hmm. earth you know yeah so i mean you can feel that so. you can it was awesome. And I want to mention, definitely go to the Church Center app and reach out. If you are in need of prayer, if you need to connect with us in any way, definitely go onto your church app and do that. You can also do it through our website, harvestina.com. The survey that he was talking about isn't necessarily available online. However, you can go into the Connect card, and there's almost the exact same choices that he was reading off that's available in the app through the Connect card. Mm -hmm. If you need prayer for anything, definitely make sure that you go in there and type those things and it is a little bit more private uh, as opposed to typing it here on the chat. I do send everything to our prayer team, but you can be very specific because it goes directly to our prayer team without yeah. anybody else seeing it. And you can be as vulnerable as you want to be mm -hmm. in those moments of typing it in. Um, if you missed any part of this message, definitely go back. Invite your friends to watch for second service. Uh, Pastor's notes are also available online if there was anything that you missed. But have a wonderful, wonderful Easter. Have a blessed Resurrection Day. Have an amazing week. And just take the joy of Jesus's death, life, burial, resurrection, all of that mm -hmm. with you throughout the week. Don't let it leave today. When Monday, when the alarm on Monday morning goes off, don't be in your regular Monday downness. Yeah, right. You know? It's like, ooh, Monday. Yeah. It's like, yay, it's yeah. Monday. Keep that Sunday resurrection feeling. Mm -hmm. If it's a difficult day, remember, it may be your Friday, but Sunday's coming. Amen. And it doesn't have to be the specific. I mean, Monday could be a Friday. I've had Mondays and Mondays, yeah. you know, and so your Monday and just keep thinking Sunday's coming. That means in just a couple of days, you know, it's all temporary. It's all temporary. No matter how bad it feels that day, Jesus's death was temporary. That's right. So, That's um, right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just go into the New Testament, see all the things that he have done, has done. If you need to talk with us at all, definitely reach out with us. We're here for you. So have a wonderful blessed day. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. We'll meet you right back here. Same time next week. Okay. Bye. Bye guys.